that I've heard around town about the council and who holds all of you accountable, who holds the mayor accountable, etc. And so I thought a great way to do that would be just to ask you a question and ask you for a goal that you would like to achieve in the next three months. Actually, you gentlemen work here, so. Um, but what you'd like to achieve in the next three months, and I told you I'd be back to check in and see how you did. So that's why I'm here tonight. And I'm here to check in on, on what your how you did with your goals. So I'm going to start with Laura. <laughs> so if I remember right, yours was just to kind of work with Paula on pump seven. So what did you find out? What did you do? Well, I believe we're still working on that. We've had people inspecting it, coming out and um, looking and seeing it. So we're still working on that. Issue. You feel good about it? Do you think yeah, that it's been positive. Positive. Okay. And then Jim, I think you had quite a bit of stuff about bringing the town council together as one team and and maybe, you know, making the town more prosperous and those kind of things. I'm paraphrasing, but how did you do on your goal? Uh, well, we got started. What? We got started. Okay. Uh, number one, the last council meeting, uh, Mr. Dew and I uh, came to an understanding that we need to find ways to enrich the town. And uh, as far as coming together, I believe we're working on achieving that goal as well. It's a uh, ongoing process, not one easily uh, finished, but as long as we're making a start, I feel as if we're in the process of doing that. Okay. Cool. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Um, and then, whatever. Um, yours was building and improving the infrastructure of the town. Um, and I wasn't able to read my handwriting, so I apologize. But it had something to do with, uh, I think, the pump project. But how, how did you do? And We're working toward that. <coughs> and. Um... I've also um, been involved with MRSC, um, checking on ordinances, town protocols, and also the building planning department. So that we have more knowledge on building permits, et cetera. And I have also helped work on the um, flood evac uh, fire evacuation plan. 
That's great. Thank you for that. Um, I don't know, Mike. I, I sent I sent an email the next day and asked Barbara to include it in your guys' packet. And I don't know if either one of you had a chance to look that over. Uh, that was in my, it was probably, yeah, in a packet from a while ago. I honestly, I haven't gone over it. Okay. So I don't want to sit here and blow smoke. Nope, nope, that's fine. That's fine. Same with you, <laughs> Mr. Duke. I'll read it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so I guess now, I, that's great. Thank you so much for, for doing that. And Mayor Bell, I think you had some stuff that you said you were going to, look into too what how did you do with your um it's uh very frustrating that whatever plans that are laid out uh, things crop up to uh, get you sidetracked so with all the emergencies that have occurred um, yes the well seven was foremost at that time and it still is and there are things that are progressing with that so okay. Uh, that was the main thing that uh, I'm continuing <coughs> to focus on. Okay. So. so, and in closing, I'd like to do this, if it's all right with you, and ask you what you'd like to do for the next three months. So, Jim, what do you want to do for the next three months? What are you going to do to, you know, help the town, help the council? What's on, what's on your agenda for the next three months? My agenda is to have all five of the council members in one accord on moving forward. Uh, no looking back, because looking back is detrimental. I've always felt that. Uh, beyond that, nothing more specific other than continue to look forward to uh, goals to uh, increase the town make it a better place to live, and in so doing, uh, <clears throat> be a help to newcomers in the town. That's great. Thank you. Laura, what do you think? Um, I'm looking forward to working with the Adams County Development Guy and um, working with him and coming up with some new ways to bring in some revenue to town. Okay. Super. That's great. I agree with both Jim and Laura that we need to improve the town and bring more um, people and businesses, et cetera, into town. Okay. One, one of the things that I'd like, maybe in the, when I come back in three months, is to understand how you went about that as well. Does that make sense? So, Mike, what do you think? Well, I understand what, uh, what they're saying, and I'm not saying I don't agree, but just a little, um, as far as not looking back, I, I, I agree with Jim on that, but there is some things we need to look back on. And, you know, uh, one of them is, I know it got started, and then we had a lot of other things come up as far as going back to, like, the water issues as far as we started to, it was getting started working on rebinding or uh, redoing the uh, ordinance on that as far as who we sell water to and stuff like that. I know it got started on, but it's kind of been set on the back burner because of a lot of the other things that have gone on. That needs to be readdressed and we need to hopefully come to a conclusion on that and get that uh, taken care of along with a couple other things. Um, you know, I know, I believe it was me and you that were supposed to do a deal with the dog and the parks and stuff like that. Need to address some of, a couple of things like that is what I would like myself to um, hopefully get accomplished here or at least get moving forward really well on especially the water the changing of the water ordinance and stuff like that and this is not a question for you to answer but more do you have a yes or no do you have ideas of how you're going to go about that yes perfect and then what you do what do you think they really say anything there's a lot, I mean, I agree with the other council members about bringing revenue into the town. We haven't had a long time. Okay. It needs to come in. We need revenue. Uh, and I've been working on a couple of projects to bring revenue in, but slow me off. But the other thing I'd like to see the town do is disgusting. Mm -hmm. it, it's a mess. You know, you drive into town, weeds everywhere, crack roads. Open suits, run down houses, you know. You always don't buy it. Yeah. 
things like uh, let's say cracks in them. Uh, is prevention better than cure? Yes. Right? We had cracks all the way up North Estuary. Right? If they hadn't been cracked sealed, they wouldn't be now two inches wide. You know, take some pocket, the trowel, go around your hands and knees, and put it in. You have to save the time a lot of money. Spending money unnecessarily. You know, I'm working on a lot of projects, but all them things need to be addressed. Really. And so you have a, a good vision of how you're going to go about like working on those projects and working with the other council members to achieve those things? Oh, you hope so, yeah. Okay. I mean, I hope that's just a straightforward program, you know, where we okay. can get the workers out there and start doing this stuff. Okay. You know, there's no excuse why none of this has been done. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Bell, can you answer the same question? Uh, well, in the next three months, uh, the projects uh, at the Quail Loop will be hopefully starting, uh, continuing with well seven issues. Uh, the uh, Eighth Street project, as well as the Quail Run, um, the station is. Uh, I'm I had notice here. Lift station is uh, almost completed, so I'll cover that a little bit more. But um, yeah, it's uh, springtime and, and uh, um, the sunshine's going to shine. All right. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you all very much. I really appreciate it. I think that there's, you know, there's kind of a lack of accountability in our society right now as a whole. I know I deal with it at work every day. And I appreciate that you're actually saying personal things and coming out and saying, I'd really like to get this accomplished so that all of us can hear what you want to accomplish as a town council member. And then hopefully other people will stand as well and hold you accountable for those things that you want to work on. Because I think if we do that as a whole, these things that you're wanting to have done will become more of a reality than just words spoken. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, council item B is the free dump day. Kind of need to nail that day down. Uh, the memo was, do you have that or do you want mine? Or? I was just <laughs> trying to, I don't have it with me. Um, okay. Could you just refresh my memory on the dates? Right. April 29, May 6, May 13, <clears throat> and May 20 were the four dates that were given. And in the discussion, I think uh, Myra, the May 13th was the uh, Mother's Day weekend, and at that time we thought that was the same weekend as alumni. Yeah, so we weren't sure on a couple of those things. Okay, so now alumni is... May 6th? I think so. Yeah. I think I sent you that. Yeah. So that pretty much takes out May 6th and May 13th. But we can still. I go for the 29th. You want to do April 29th? That's what I feel would be best because then when you go towards the end of May, you're getting pretty close to the combine weekend and stuff. Some people have a lot of stuff going on. Okay. The closer we get to that first with other committees and stuff. So. Okay. <clears throat> My vote is the 29th of April. If it would work best for the people in the town and everybody else up here. Okay. Anybody else? Oh, I agree. With that. It's good. Good job. Okay. I want you to think of weather. <laughs> well, it, can, it doesn't matter what day it is. It could be raining or whatever. So. We've got that in June. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jim? Uh, Mike and I discussed the, the previous meeting uh, concerning the date, and I was all for later. And then uh, he brought to the fore the idea that there are a lot of things as we get closer to the derby that are going to uh, get in the way of having that day. 
Uh, most of the time, that's not entirely the deal, but I believe that in this instance, that the 29th of April should be our uh, health day. Laura, do you have opinions? Definitely. You can clean in any time. Any time. Any Sunday, I've got free. These are Saturdays. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mara, do you have? April. That's fine. Okay, so um, does that need to be motioned, or does that just a general consensus? That I'll just we'll make the motion. Oh. I'll second it. <laughs> It's been moved and seconded to um, have, April yeah, have April 29 be our free dump day with uh, CDSI. And I will uh, put a call in to them tomorrow. And, and we're going to have, just, just to verify or whatever, we're going to have the same amount of dumpsters and stuff like we did last time. You would Correct. have your truck. The truck. And then, and then a, if you want the... For, uh, furniture and metals and appliances. Right. And then if you want a mattress bin. Right. Is that what you want? Yeah. We're yeah, I believe clients. that's what we did last time. And it, that way, if people have appliances or whatever, they know they're going to have to pay the, the normal fee for dollars. Okay. Bring those or whatever. But I think that way it kind of gives us an option for everything. That works for us. Okay. What about tires? Uh, CDSI does not take tires. No, they won't take tires. Okay, so I will, uh, I will uh, call CDSI or Barbara Will tomorrow to confirm that. All right. Um, okay, council. The COVID resolution 2108 was able and we never did bring it back up. But so we have, since it's tabled, we need to make a decision on that. And it's the, um, huh? Uh, okay. What it was. Okay. 2108 was a resolution um, be it resolved that the town council of Lynn and Adams County proclaims that a proclamation of emergency is no longer required and that it is in the best interest of the town to rescind the proclamation of emergency. Resolutions 2001 and 2002 and any others is hereby repealed in their entirety. The provisions of this resolution shall become effective upon adoption. That is the last paragraph of it. It is the COVID pandemic um, emergency response. And resolution 2001 is um, Governor Jay Inslee's emergency proclamation ordering all events. Um, <clears throat> um, be stay home, stay healthy. Um, it is where um, the town of Lind um, proclaimed a state of emergency, yes. And um, where town hall was closed um, and would only um, do essential duties. Um, council meetings were um, supposed to be held uh, by telephone. Um, uh, all public hearings were suspended to discourage in-person attendance. Any uh, public uh, any public comments were supposed to be done via email or in writing. Um, resolution 2002 was uh, wages for the town crew members um, if they were sick. Um, and um, it was tabled because uh, um, the COVID emergency or pandemic was still ongoing at the time, and it needs to be decided whether you're going to um, declare it 
over yeah. to continue in-person meetings or whether you want to go back to telephone meetings. <coughs> and I think at the time that this was brought up, we were still kind of iffy in the, the COVID pandemic and people sick and, and all that. So now I'm bringing it back to you for a decision to, uh, well, if, if you want to uh, rescind the COVID emergency uh, resolutions, then we will present uh, up to date resolution number for 23. I don't know what the number would be. 2302. Okay, 2302. Because right now it's still ongoing because it was tabled. Yeah. <laughs> my opinion as well, I think it's past the time. Uh, if anyone incurs COVID-19 at this point in time, I would think that they would remove themselves from public gatherings. Uh, that's the only caveat that I can see for it. Other than that, I believe it is past time uh, okay. to, re to rescind it. All right, so um, at the next meeting, we will present, um, I don't know what else to call it, the COVID resolution, and it will be 2302. Okay. okay. So we'll, next uh, meeting, we'll do that. It'll have the same wording as the 2108, just update. Okay, so that takes care of that emergency. All right. Um, everyone's going to have to bear with me. Uh, the next item is the added summary of wealth number seven findings and I'm going to uh, do my best to read it. Uh, summary of town of land well seven biogeochemical sampling findings and options. Uh, Geoengineers Dr. Kevin Lindsay. One, well five located north of number seven well seven collapsed and was abandoned in 1976, but never decommissioned per chapter 173-160 WEC. So that needs to be addressed first. It is a liability for the town because it could provide a pathway for contaminants reaching deeper into the subsurface as well as being a safety issue. Decommissioning would focus on placing a cement ground seal from the bottom to the ground surface and removal of any casing if possible. Number two, well seven. The evaluation found evidence of biological fouling in the well, potential for mineral scaling in the well, likely mechanical problems with the pump and possible evidence of shallow or surface water getting into the well. There is a remediation strategy for these as follows. More sampling will need to be completed before summer to check for elimination of biological problems in water system operations. This includes sampling at the tank just to make sure we're okay to go or good to go before putting back online. We can change to a smaller producing submersible pump for summer operation, one that produces water at a steadier rate 
than the rapid drawdown pumping system that is deteriorating. This is designed to keep the well consistently operational for as long as possible while funding is secured for the additional work needed to address the biological and scaling that is affecting well production. The residents may again have to conserve water during the summer months, not making demands above production. The work needed to address the biological and scaling issues indicated by the evaluation <coughs> involve a process that includes swabbing, brushing, purging the well to dislodge and remove scale and biological masses, chemical treatment, <coughs> purging to re, uh, further remove these materials, disinfection to reduce, eliminate the biological activity contributing to a loss of pumping performance. Couple with the event at well seven, well five should be decommissioned prior to the start of the work on well seven. This is a labor and chemical intensive process costing on the order of $200,000 to $250,000 or possibly more. While it will attack the end well issues, it will not solve the problems associated with declining water or groundwater level, the aquifer. Three, hopefully by next winter, we'll have found a quarter or a half of a million dollars to get in a better position for the following summer in 2024. Water. Uh, number four, well seven water has not been introduced into the water system since the end of irrigation season on, approximate, on approximately October 5th of 2022. Number five, on January 9 and 10, four well seven water samples were tested for presence of bacteria and were negative. These samples were taken from the system before introduction of fluorine disinfection treatment, indicating that water produced from well seven is safe to drink even without disinfection. The chlorination process disinfects the drinking water and destroys microbes. Remember, not all bacteria are pathogenic. Number six, our next step will be to sample again and send to a specialized laboratory for presence and or identification of microbiological activity. These samples will be taken before and after the point of chlorine introduction. Number seven, following is a list and description of bacteria that we test for and have always been negative for presence. Total coliform bacteria, negative results. Total coliform bacteria is a type of microbe found in soils, plants, surface water, surface water, and in the digestive systems of warm-blooded animals. Fecal chloroforms, negative results, a common type of total chloroform is fecal chloroform. This bacteria can be found in the digestive systems and feces of warm-blooded animals. E. coli bacteria, negative results. E. coli is part of the fecal chloroform or coliform group. Again, this bacteria is found in the environment, some foods, and in the intestines of warm-blooded animals. Dr. Lindsay from Geoengineers is putting together planning 
level cost estimates for us. He's also working with and for other surrounding area towns. Century West, and remember now we will be working with Mr. Van Remick. Um, Steve Nelson has moved. But Century West is working on finding funding for us, estimating $250,000 for now. And once received, then we can go out for bids for next year. Added note, a new higher producing well is in consideration. Our water system plan indicates that it is scheduled for 2023-2024 and a budget of $750,000 plus engineering fees. These dates and money estimates are for planning purposes only. And remember that big thick book, the uh, small system, small water systems, planning, whatever that was working on, that's what he's meaning there. Um, and this is uh, repeated from the agenda of a meeting on Thursday. Last Thursday. From a recent Columbia Basin Sustainable Water Coalition stakeholder meeting that was held in Moses Lake, the main takeaway of the group is addressing Columbia Basin, the whole area, domestic groundwater supply issues and create locally driven recommendations that influence water delivery methods and policy that will direct uh, resource for long-term groundwater solutions. No one can fix a declining aquifer. So any questions, comments may be written and then we uh, turned into the town office and then uh, <coughs> submitted to Dr. Lenz. So that's, that came in. Uh, Yesterday. Quick question on that, Paula. <clears throat> Back to where <clears throat> you were talking about how that 200 to 250K, um, it, was that, I know you said it a couple times, but was that, is that their estimate on sailing off well five or is that not? No. We don't even, so we don't even have a, no, he's very basically on what it would cost us to seal off well five. Right. He's, he's researching that out. Um, okay. as we speak yesterday so all right so thank you for being patient through my reading um, council of the agenda um, new business first item is Chris Olson he wants to address the council uh, in particular I'll just turn the floor over to you um, turn her one out but this is what I have a three part that uh, I can read it. Okay, well, <clears throat> one part is I own the lots between on either side of Spread Road, which would be north of Main Street. And so, part one is I'm asking last year I had a discussion with Henry. He told me that the whole place was mine. I informed him there was a city street in the middle and for the last 20 years that I've had this there's been no city street maintenance or it's anything design. happened so I'm asking that you make a decision on either maintaining or abandoning that street part one and then the next one is is to allow me to either get an approval from you to move forward with, I've been speaking with Andy with Adams County Building and Planning in order to either turn those into the lots pending following the Adams County flood plain criteria, which Town of Lind, he, and he told me that Town of Lind has adopted the Adams County same flood plan. So if if you would give me an okay to move forward with that, and if not, I need you to give me a letter saying why you won't, because right now the taxes are $600 a year on those lots that 
the only way that I can argue with the county is to have a paper from you saying why you will not let me or if, if build if on it. We give you if the, you give, give me an okay to want. build on it, then I can move forward <coughs> with engineering and did the realtor. Did he give you any um, feet for the floodplain? One foot above floodplain is where the finished floor needs to be. Would be 1360. And then he said something to me about anything built would probably have to be up a little bit so the water would flow under. Yes, one foot above the 100 year flood. Line. So. And so if, so that's basically a three part question for you to make a decision. Okay. Sorry, my printer's out, so you have to look at my chicken scratch or you can listen to it. Okay. Chris, this right here, when, he, when Chris came and, and started asking about the floodplain and, and its lots and everything, um, this, this is what um, flood insurance rate map from FEMA uh, for the town of Lynn. So you want to point to where your right here. You see where Maine is? You see it? I can see it on that small mic. Okay, here is here's Maine. Should we shorten it down? Shorten. This is this is Maine right here, okay. Um, and then this is, of course, the floodplain. And your lots are over here. Well, it goes from here. It goes from here to here. So he's got the, the lots on the bank, right? So it's pretty much total floodplain. And that's what he's saying, that the uh, county um, have the, the stipulations X amount of feet above yes, you have the to ground. Yes, one foot above, so above you, the 100 year floodplain, or the finished floor. Yeah, finished floor. Okay. okay. Um, so, but you haven't I said. Just need, I just need either way of, because the realtor that was going to help market these needs to know whether or not, if you're going to say absolutely no way, then I can say, Adams County, there's a problem with your tax base. And you need to lower these back down to the thousand dollars that they were at last time. But now you say that they're worth forty-four thousand yeah, dollars. So a little bit restrictive, a little bit excessive if the town of is not going to even say that there's a possibility of building on. So and there this is the last chance to be able to get that paper to work to the Adams County before he sends out tax bills for this year. Um, and council, uh, FEMA designated floodplain and floodway. Um, this, it says floodways, the placement of new or replacement manufactured homes is prohibited in floodways under the provisions of RCW 86.16.041. And WAC 173-158-070. Repairs, re reconstruction, replacement, or improvements to existing farmhouse structures located in floodways may be considered under... Uh, provisions of WAC 173-158-075. Uh, re repairs, 
replacement, reconstruction, replacement, or improvements to substantially damaged re residential constructions or uh, structures other than farmhouses located in floodways may be considered under provisions WAC 173-158-076. There is a, a requirement uh, for flood insurance. Chris, I'm sure yeah. you know that. You got that? I'm reading there. Yeah. Okay. And um, floodplain management ordinances and amendments that's out of the RCWs, they, they're pretty much restricting uh, because of the flood possibilities. So um, I don't know if, if you want to uh, take his information and um, get the RCWs and read and, and go through that, or what? I don't know. To me, it, it, it's his lots. If he wants to, like I said, this is my opinion on this at, at this moment. If he wants if he wants to build on them or whatever, and he's going to do it according to follow all the rules and, and, you know, put the flooring a foot above the 100-year flood plane or whatever, if he's going to go buy all that, then... I don't see why he can't. They're, I mean, they're his lots. I'm not going to tell a guy what he can do with his own lots. I, I do have some information what. you guys need to have. Up in Odessa, the Department of Ecology almost made us tear down somebody's house who had been there for 15 years. So I would advise you guys to check with the Department of Ecology before you do anything. That's to protect you too, Chris. Yeah. The Department of Ecology will make you remove it if it's not right. And so I wouldn't okay. even, I don't, I wouldn't try to interpret those. You need to talk to them because they'll tell you. I mean, Andy can say whatever he wants. And if you build it and Department of Ecology says it's wrong, then you're just SOL. And that's a terrible place to be. Oh, that's good. Pardon me? Andy? I was in <laughs> well, do you want to build, or do you just want us to say no? I think we all want one more, please. So also, also keep this. Well, no, uh, you can't your do thought. anything. Put it that one. <laughs> uh, your uh, services. We don't even know. I'm still researching. That. We don't even know about water and sewer service there. So, There's no restriction as far as the... But it may not be available, is what I'm saying. That, that's what I'm researching for you. Oh. You going to put a sewer line on there? Yeah. No. So I'm saying, I'm checking things out. Mayor, if yes. I may, uh, in as much as I don't believe that we can make a decision this evening, sounds like there's an awful lot of things that we as a town need to consider before we say yay or nay. Okay. Uh, looking at it from the town's perspective, I would like to see a copy of what Mr. Olson has uh, put up there and uh, his three uh, plans of operation of how he's going to go about before and I said that I don't believe that we can do anything before the next meeting. Okay. So if we could get that information okay. as quickly as possible, I'd appreciate it. Chris, do you have your paper? Do you have your paper that, that you were reading off of? Oh. Yeah, no, I'm not asking you to team do anything no, I, with the floodplain. I'm asking you to either maintain or dead in that street that Henry wants me to mow. Okay. I have so that, far, but my the tax the are the the more than what you're uh, guys you're talking to each other. Um, where we, we'll wait and do more okay. call Odessa maybe call Department of Ecology, do more whatever. Can we can you can you wait until the next meeting to get a decision, yay or nay, Chris, or no? It's just so close to him sending out another set of bills. I mean, I've already offered to donate them back to Adams County and take the $44,000 donation. 
But they want to take it. They said, no way, they don't want it. <laughs> well, you can vote on abandoned. Well, don't have to live in town. Yeah, do that either. You can't do that. Do you want them? You want another part? I'm getting my shot. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that we're waiting. We're going to wait. Yeah. I'm sorry, but I believe we almost have to. Yeah. We need okay. so, a little bit more information one way or the other and to make an informed decision so that. Uh, beginning to apply. Uh, okay. Now, when I got my tax bill, I was not very happy. They raised the twenty-seven grand this year. Yeah. So, so, Mr. Gershaw, if I ask, if we bypass that part of it, we still need to get something. What are we going to do with the city loan? Are they going to maintain it or not maintain it? Okay, that is it's also not part of the process. I don't want any more letters saying, "Please take care of your property," because it's right in the middle. It literally backed up, like, you know, property here, property here, city street here. It leads to nowhere. You want to go off the end of it and go in the coulee? That's your choice. But what do you want to do? Yeah, we, we can, uh, I can show you what, where she's talking okay. about. Um, okay, um, council, moving on. Um, building permits on your, uh, in your packet. One is uh, from Mr. and Mrs. Schuler, Dina Schuler. Uh, I'm going to direct this individually. Okay. Um, carport installation, and they were kind enough to uh, give a picture. Okay. They have scraped their their backyard down. They've got barriers on the either side and on the front part, I guess, um, for a carport. And the building permit request is for the top top part. Um, on the back side of the picture is the actual site. Plan. Very well. Damn, I got all fancy. Yeah. <laughs> um, we zero escape. <laughs> <laughs> no more water issues. Nice. So, yeah. um, so you can see uh, the fourth street, if you put that with your belly there, um, the back side, she, the fence. 10 feet away from the fence, the alley, got enough room. There's 34 and a half feet to the house. The packet that they turned in is this thick, if you want to look at it. I'm good, I'm fine with it. <laughs> I don't think that anybody's going to object. It's very well done. Yeah. I'll make a motion when you burn this. I'll second that. Yeah. Okay, Robert and Mike. <clears throat> okay, uh, motion's been made to um, approve the building permit for uh, Tina Schuler. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 And any opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> yeah. Um, Tina, can I ask you to, to let everybody know what you found out about that three month? Yeah, so uh, <coughs> working with this building company, uh, they put these carports and stuff up all over. There's actually down in Oregon. They put them up all over Washington, Oregon. And uh, I have I know people that have some done in Spokane. And uh, they said I didn't have to have a permit. Well, I kind of heard rumors around that, yeah, that's probably not a good thing. So I called the county and talked to them. And they said, if you have a carport up, if it's in the same place for more than three months, you're supposed to have a permit for it. So, and then, of course, I had to have it engineered because the company wouldn't do a permit without having it engineered. So it's all. Oh, yeah. I got you. 
That's yeah. interesting to yeah. know, though. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. So that's what they said. So no matter what kind of carport it is, if it's there for three months, basically. Yeah, you better move it and put it. You're not going <laughs> <laughs> Right. Right. So here I got you. <laughs> There's a percentage of the lot that has to remain with no buildings on it. Is that taken into consideration there? I believe he did do that with uh, Andy. Yes. Yes. I have a question about the six foot fence. I just found it interesting. So we can't have six foot fences in town? In the yes, front. In the front. The front. You can, it just can't be in the front of your house, but okay. four feet. Four feet. So the rest of it can be six so foot. But so just... if you have large dogs, they're, they can only be in the back? Yeah, have them. Yeah. Or hopefully they don't jump over the short over fence the along the front, foot. I guess. Is that an RCW or is that? Is that's, that's a zone ordinance. Is that a zone Okay, so yeah. um, with that. It's a local ordinance. Okay. okay, so with that comment, uh, today we've got uh, the front of the house. Okay, look at the front of the house. Yeah. And where he had thought that he would put the fence and then we started talking about the requirements and everything then he says no problem i'm going to take that front and i'm going to move it back to the edge of the or the corners of the house so the front part is go not going to be fenced the, the, he's going to stop it at the edge of the, right. the house right there right. okay so he's he's uh Amiable to suggestions, reworking, all that stuff. So, um, but this is what he's turned in so far. And a question concerning that uh, apparently this is going to be a, a new house. Mm -hmm. And has he uh, submitted the appropriate plans and everything to the county? Yes. 
He's turned in everything in that he needs to. Mm -hmm. I make a motion. I'll second that. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's the street address on that? Four. Uh, it's been moved and seconded to approve the building permit for Ricky Kipper. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. What was the street address? Sorry. It's 107 and a half East 4th Street. Yeah. Yeah. Shouldn't motion have that he uh, be amended for the prison? Because if it's on there, it says that he can have a six foot fence in the front. Oh, you want a new plan? That's a good idea. If it's not being writing on there, that it, it cannot be a six foot fence in front. Um, so it shows it right here in the drawing that we moved the fence back to the corner of the house. Okay. Which you told you yeah, it's already okay. in the drawing right here. Okay. Yeah, but it, it, yeah, okay. I was just saying, if it's not in the paperwork, then it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, that's what we should for eight straight down. All right. Any more? This is just too much. Okay. Um, all right, council. We've got large and small animal permits.
in the works getting going, uh, actual starting date, don't know yet. Gotta wait for the, the bids and, and all that stuff to go out. Uh, so with that, that's all that I have. Uh, so we'll return to the agenda for the Finance Committee report. <laughs> I didn't see anything. Okay, I make a motion that we approve the warrant check register dated 12 31 2022 to 12 31 2022 in the amount of $26,959.76. I second the motion. Okay, moved and seconded to approve the warrant uh, check register. December 31st, 2022 to December 31st, uh, 2022 for $26,959.76. All in favor say aye. 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 And any opposed? Motion carries. I also make a motion to approve the warrant check register dated 1-1-2023 to one twenty three. 2023 in the amount of $39,722.25. Second motion. Okay, it's moved and seconded to approve the warrant check register January 1st of 2023 to January 23rd of 2023. Dollar amount $39,722.25. All in favor say aye. Aye. And any opposed? Motion carries. Now with that, uh, Council, you have officially closed out uh, 22 with the 13th month bills. Um, and now we're strictly on 2023s. Okay. I also make a motion to approve the outstanding invoices table. 1 1 2023 to 1 13 2023 in the amount of $167,520.08. I second the motion. Okay, it's moved and seconded to approve the uh, outstanding invoices January 1st of 2023 to January 13th, 2023. The dollar amount one hundred sixty-seven thousand five hundred twenty dollars and eight cents. All in favor, say aye. Aye. And any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, council, uh, please go ahead. Uh, please note the uh, CIAW insurance. That is why the big dollar amount. Here. <laughs> that that's your insurance policies. Um, go state farm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm probably not there. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Um, okay, council. Um, Mr. Robert, do you have anything that can be? Not tonight, but I'm working on it. Okay. okay. All right. Mr. Wold? <clears throat> um, just. Not really. Uh, we need. There's a couple things I think, obviously, that we went over tonight that we need to be ready to address at the next meeting and have an answer for some people. On that. But other than that, although really we have anything. Okay. Fire. I have nothing at this time. Okay. No. Nothing. I have a few comments. Uh, let it be known that any time you use social media to say anything, that it becomes public record. Uh, that's number one. Number two, evacuation is occasioned by the uh, county sheriff's office that is not within the purview of the town of Wind to issue an evacuation order. Number three, sewers. Unless they are big line sewers, the property owners are responsible for hooking up to the main line if they have a problem with either orange or other uh, areas. Notice uh, for the garbage day change, 
That is done by the consolidated company that picks up our garbage. That is not ours as well. Everyone was notified by number one in the mail with their bill. There were uh, notices posted throughout the town of Lynn. Uh, hopefully we can get someone to on their website to coordinate with the town as far as notifying of things of this nature that occur again. Uh, uh, in regards to uh, videotaping the council meetings, I would appreciate if uh, it would be said by anyone that is doing so to stand up and let everybody know that is also a public record. And so if you're going to videotape and then put it on YouTube or anywhere else, I'd appreciate it if you would do the whole thing, not just parts of it that you wish to promote. And uh, on the sign-up sheet, uh, I'd like to see some changes made. Uh, I'll have a sign-up sheet with recommendations the next time around. That's all I have to say. <coughs> all right, uh, speaking of sign-up sheet, uh, four minutes is allowed. Uh, first up is Mandy Pfeiffer, non-agenda item. Um, dropped the ball the last time around, so I'm trying this again. <laughs> it's one question, and then I would like you to answer. Okay. Oh, what is the code of conduct according to your handbook for in public and at meetings? And what happens if you break it? It's not happening. What is conduct. the code of conduct according to your handbook like for the council members for in public and at meetings? And what happens if you break it? You really want to know it? Nothing. Nothing at all. Uh, I don't have the answer for you because I, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'd make a suggestion that uh, to get the real answers, uh, if we could provide a copy, an unsigned copy of it, uh, for her to peruse. And because honestly, I don't know what the ramifications are if you. Uh, Violent. Okay. Do you have a copy of that? Is that what you're saying? Well, I'm afraid about that. There is no slap on the wrist or anything like that. It's down to the townspeople and the voters to put a vote. Well, I think it's the council. That, 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 that works both ways. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was talking to one of the I was on the phone maybe an hour, an hour and a half. I hear about stuff, how this parish is run, and he said, I'll be absolutely honest with you, there's nothing we can do for that. I don't know what I need. I'll be helping the very guy I'll talk to all the people. That way, I'm trying to make sure that there isn't a staff in the class. We've had two different things going on. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. Okay, next one.
um, especially regarding commerce and businesses and bringing things into the town. Um, ACDC was here the last meeting, so you guys kind of got familiarized with that entity. Um, if you remember, he did say he reached out to the local businesses in the area. He did not reach out to me. And I know the other businesses he did not reach out to either. I called and left a message with him. Um, that was a few weeks ago. I haven't received any word back. So um, just be aware of that. I wanted to see what he could do possibly for my business and other businesses in the area. Um, because I am a part of the Chamber of Commerce. Which brings about another point I would like to see um, some more, I guess, teamwork with the Chamber of Commerce and with the Council so we can kind of get involved and, you know, work together to help the town. Maybe we can, you know, work together to get grants to beautify the area, to bring in more people. Um, lots of possibilities there. Um, I do know with the, the letter that went out um, regarding the Christmas parade, um, it wasn't mentioned about the Lynn Chamber of Commerce. We actually put that on. Um, so that kind of felt like a we weren't recognized as an entity and a uh, you know benefit for the town and the community. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, I since me, PJ, and I don't see any other is that here? Oh yeah. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> Ashley and Robert were all over the Chamber of Commerce, so if you wanna Reach out to any of us. Jamie is also the president. Um, there's a few other members too. If you have any questions or comments. What are your What are your meetings, Heather? Um, uh, meetings, are they kind of like this? Anybody can go to them, or are they like a private? Yeah, any, I mean, anybody who would like to join and volunteer are welcome at the meetings. I've been kind of lack on posting it on social media just because I've been under a lot of stress. I have no, a part time job, a business, a family, and Bunch of other things. Um, okay. I just I don't know when your meetings are, honestly. So that's why I was curious. They're every first Monday of the month, unless um, scheduling issues come okay, up. Okay, so the first Monday of the month, you just have them once a month then? Yep, at okay. 6 p.m. Maybe we can just change it to 6 p.m. Um, okay. Where? Yeah, and that location does change because we don't have a, a physical building. So <clears> if, if you reach out, I'll try to get better at posting it. There is a win. Um, Chamber of Commerce Facebook page as well. Um, if any of you guys use social media, you can follow there. Um, I think we're working on a website. There is a phone number you can reach if you Google or just, you know, reach out to one of us. Um, speaking of social media sites, I think I talked to Dorshack this last uh, right. couple weeks ago about possibly having a Town of Lynn Facebook page. Um, I would more, be more than happy to work with Paula Barb um, on organizing that so we can get information out. Um, I can help with that any way that I can. Um, just let me know. I'd be happy to help and you know, be a resource for when people don't see their mail or do things in time. And yeah, we are in a different generation, even though we're a small town, social media is a big asset here. Yeah. Any questions? Uh, one question that I came up with, uh, does the chamber still do the uh, welcome? The welcome packets? Yes. We are working on gathering those together. We are a bit behind, um, but yes, we, we are working on those. Okay, I, I thought so. Uh, in conjunction with that, uh, we were uh, processing a uh, evacuation map okay. to end. We would like to present that yeah. as an addition to the uh, welcome, oh, packet. welcome packet for yeah, yeah, new uh, uh, members in town. And yeah. I think it would be very beneficial yeah. for both of us. Uh, I think it's a great idea. I was going to suggest that as well about uh, keeping in touch with the town on uh, events that occur as they occur. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, that'd be that'd be great. I will, uh, if you guys get paper maps printed out, uh, just hand them to me or anybody else, we'd be happy to throw those in. All right. Any other questions, comments? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, next, uh, Denise Need, uh, non agenda item. Yeah, I have a few questions. Uh, Barb, have you given the 
Council the November treasurer's report yet? No, I don't give the treasurer's reports. You don't give any of the council members the treasurer's reports? They don't ask for them. No, no. The finance committee. Oh, the finance committee gets them. Yeah. Have Everybody you gets given anybody the November one yet? November, yes. And the December one? Yes. So you haven't balanced the year end, but you did give them the December? The year end has been balanced and closed. The 13th month is part of the year end. It has so, been closed. That's all right. So the road to the dump, you closed the uh, dump in November and Steve was going to redo the road. What happened there? I don't really know what his uh, schedule is for getting out to the dump. We've had some flooding to take care of and we've got other things that has come up for his uh, schedule. So, so he hasn't done anything out there? Not, not as of now, plus we've got to wait for it to uh, when it turn into spring. Mm -hmm. And the, the report for Well 7, you said you received it yesterday. Why wasn't it on the agenda? You had time to put D on there. Why wasn't the title on there? People might have liked to know that that was going to be discussed tonight. Okay. You don't have a reason for why it wasn't on there? I put it on as a added. The agenda is finalized on Friday. So you put D with a blank on there? Just in case, just like we have a D in the, the old business. The agenda okay. is finalized on Friday, so we cannot add something until... Well, why isn't it posted publicly until Monday night then? Oh, we can change. If you if you finalize it, you should get it out for people. And then um, the tree removal, have you had any more discussion about that? I haven't gotten any more quotes yet. I'm because there, quotes. people had a lot of questions about that. This is a tree over by Cheryl Hazy's house over there. In the south side park, yes. And it didn't appear to be blocking any water. So why is it you want to spend 2000 to remove it? Uh, it was in the way <coughs> of the ditch that comes down the hill to the coulee. It was plugging, it was causing a plug. That is why the water went all the way into the park and then back around. Lyndon, did you happen to go look at that? It no, is. I didn't. I we have on. pictures that show that it didn't do that, and I don't need to argue that part. It's two thousand dollars. I you said somebody asked you to take it down, so I just would think the council members should look at the pictures that were taken because the tree isn't blocking the water flow. So okay. if we have a reason to take it down, if it's dead and going to fall on someone's house, great. But if it's not blocking the water flow, why are we spending two thousand? Thank you for your comments. Well, was. we have pictures that show it wasn't. So, okay. and the town crew could do it. We don't need to spend two thousand. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your suggestions. That's it. Okay, council. I'll make a motion to move the action up. Okay, move and second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Aye